As we all know, sound waves travel through a medium. When the end of this medium is reached, there are several different behaviors the sound wave may undergo, such as transmission, refraction, reflection, and or diffraction. When the sound wave is reflected, this reflection may eventually reach our ears as echoes. If the reflective surface is more than 17 meters away from the listener, the sound will take greater than 0.1 seconds to reflect and return to the listener. Since the brain only holds the memory of sound for less than 0.1 seconds, this will result in a perceived delay between the original sound wave and the reflected one, creating what we call an echo. The echo time is the time it takes for sound waves to travel to the reflective surface and back, and is directly related to the distance between the source and the reflecting surface. If we know the time and the distance, we can use echoes to measure the speed of sound using the formula speed equals distance divided by time. Smartphones can detect these echoes better than humans can, because, as mentioned, the brain will store the memory of the sound for up to 0.1 seconds. If the echo time is lesser than this, humans will not be able to perceive the echo. Thus, the reflected sound wave is instead called a reverberation, and because we cannot distinctly hear it, we instead perceive it as prolongation of the original sound. Reverberations, while less obviously observable than echoes in our daily lives, are still very common. One example is the effect created when singing in the shower due to the very small dimensions of a typical shower. Our experiment was centered around whether or not the speed of sound could be accurately measured through the use of echoes, and this was tested with the sonar function of the smartphone application, Firefox. This function essentially measured the echo time, which could then be translated to the speed of sound or the distance between the smartphone and the reflecting surface, depending on the known value plugged in. The set of procedures followed in this experiment began with the phone being placed in the dampening box, as shown in Figure 1, consisting of multiple pillows and boxes layered with tissue paper. Care was taken to make sure that the phone speaker was facing the surface, in order to have optimal results. The Firefox function was then initiated, allowing the application to release a chirp, but travels across the surface and is echoed back. Firefox records the reflected sound wave, and a calculation is run to find the chirp with the highest cross-correlation to the initial emitted chirp. The data collected in the first set of trials most alternated between three precise values close to the standard speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second. After realizing the potential inaccuracy of these results, we worked to solve the issue by contacting the Firefox team. However, once we had received a response and attempted the experiment again, the second and third set of trials were drastically different from the first, and produced highly inaccurate results for an unknown reason. For example, even with using the same setup and methods as the first experiment, the data ranged from 600 meters per second to 900 meters per second instead of the expected 343 meters per second. The experiment was then conducted in various environments and with different equipment in order to see if these such alterations would give more accurate results, but all trials had produced similar data near the 800 meters per second mark. Moreover, we had attempted further communication with Firefox, and while they were very helpful and provided technical information that we were able to theoretically understand, the feedback given was not relevant in practice. We had also asked for help from our instructors with interpreting the guidance given by the Firefox team. But similarly to our own understanding, it was a bit confusing to apply to our own experiment. Thus, although our experiment did not end up succeeding, and we still have some questions as to what went wrong, we did gain some valuable insights and experience through the process of collaborating and seeking help from the team that created the Firefox application. One of the key lessons we had learned from this project is that although such experience may not work as planned, the results being theoretically accurate is not the most important part. Instead, the knowledge we gained about problem solving and communication are the crucial components of this experience, and we hope that we can keep these lessons with us.